Initiation. During initiation, the initiator tRNA bind to the ribosomal subunits after recognizing the start codon in the mRNA. In prokaryotes, the initiator tRNA is designated tRNA F-methionine, which has a formal group attached to methionine known as N-formal methionine. As initiation starts, the mRNA, tRNA, F-methionine, and riboso ribosomal subunits form an initiation complex. The formation of this complex requires the participation of three initiation factors, IF1, IF2, and IF3. First, IF1 and IF3 bind to the 30S subunit, preventing the binding of the 50S subunit. Next, the mRNA binds to the 30S subunit. This binding is caused by a nine-nucleotide sequence called the Shine-Dalgarno. The Shine-Dalgarno sequence is complementary to a short sequence within the 16S RNA, rRNA, which promotes the hydrogen bonding of the mRNA to the 30S subunit. In the next step, IF2 promotes the binding of tRNA F-methionine to the mRNA already bound to the 30S subunit. The tRNA F-methionine binds to the start codon, which is typically a few nucleotides after the Shine-Dalgarno sequence. The tRNA F-methionine binds to the P site on the ribosome after the mRNA and tRNA F-methionine have become bound to the 30S subunit, 1F, IF1 and IF3 are released, and then IF2 hydrolyzes the GTP that was attached to it and is also re-released. This allows the 50S ribosomal subunit to bind with the 30S subunit, forming the 70S complex. Elongation. In the ribosome, there are three sites where the elongation takes place. The A site is the entry for the new tRNA charged with an amino acid or amino acyl tRNA. The P site contains the peptidyl tRNA, the tRNA that carries the growing peptide sh polypeptide shape. And the E site is where the uncharged tRNA exists. During elongation, amino acids are added one at a time to a grow growing polypeptide. To begin e elongation, a charged tRNA brings a new amino acid to the ribosome at the A site, so it can be attached to the end of the growing polypeptide. The short polypeptide is attached to the tRNA located at the P site of the ribosome. A charged tRNA complementary to the codon in the mRNA carrying a single amino acid binds to the A site. The hydrolysis of GTP by the elongation factor EFTU provides energy for the binding of a tRNA to the A site. The next step is the peptidyl transfer reaction. The polypeptide is removed from the tRNA in the P site and transferred to the amino acid in the A site. This transfer is accompanied by the formation of a peptide bond between the amino acid at the A site and the last amino acid in the growing polypeptide. The peptidyl transfer reaction is catalyzed by a component of 50S subunit known as peptidyl transferase. After the peptidyl transfer reaction is complete, the tRNA at the P site releases the amino acid onto the tRNA on the A site and becomes empty. At the same time, the ribosomes move to the next codon in the mRNA in the 3 direction, 3 prime direction. This stage is known as ribosomal translocation. The A site is now unoccupied and is ready to accept a new tRNA. As a result, the empty tRNA is now in the E site and the peptidyl tRNA is in the P site. The cycle is repeated for each codon on the mRNA. The translocation of ribosome requires the hydrolysis of GDP via another factor called EFG. Under normal cellular conditions, a polypeptide can elongate at a rate of 15 to 20 amino acid per second in bacteria. Termination The final stage is termination and occurs when one of the stop codons, either UAA, UAG, or UGA, is reached at the A site. 
No tRNA can fit in the A site at that point as there is no tRNA that can match that sequence. Instead, these codons are recognized by proteins known as the release factors, RF1, RF2, and RF3. Binding of these release factors catalyze the cleavage of the bond between the polypeptide and the tRNA. The polypeptide is released from the ribosome. Then the ribosome is dis disassociated into the subunits and ready for a new round of translation. In the translation of eukaryotes, initiation is the first stage. The rRNA consists of a large subunit, 60S, and a small subunit, 40S. These pre-ribosomal subunits formed in the nucleolus travel to the nucleus and exit through nuclear pores into the cytosol. In the cytosol, we have our tRNA that carries methionine, an amino acid. This structure is known as the initiator tRNA, or charged tRNA. The tRNA is made up of the nucleotides, but three nucleotides at the bottom end are special because they are the nucleotides that will bind with the mRNA. In the tRNA, this is called the anticodon. The initiator tRNA contains a specific anticodon, UAC. There are also EIFs, which stand for eukaryotic initiation factors. These are proteins that help bind the charged tRNA directly to the 40S small subunit, forming our pre-initiation complex. How are eukaryotic mRNAs recognized by this pre-initiation complex? The mRNA is recognized by the initiation factor 4, which is a multi-protein complex that recognizes the 7-methylguanosine cap at the 5' prime end of the mRNA. This initiation factor then facilitates the binding of the 5' prime end of the mRNA to the 40S ribosomal subunit. Once attached, it begins to scan for the start codon, AUG, which follows a set of guidelines in COSEX rules. At the start codon, the large subunit then attaches. All the initiation factors are released, and this forms the initiation complex, completing the ribosome. The second stage of translation is elongation. In elongation, we begin working with our completed initiation complex. The ribosome in this complex has three sites. The A site, where the charged tNRNA attaches, the P site for the growing polypeptide chain, and the E site, which is the exit site for the uncharged tRNA. A new tRNA carrying an amino acid now enters the A site of the ribosome. On the ribosome, the anticodon of the incoming tRNA is matched against the mRNA codon positioned in the A site. When the right charged tRNA enters the A site, a peptide bond is made between two now adjacent amino acids. This is called peptidyl transferase. As the polypeptide bond is formed, the tRNA in the P site releases the amino acids onto the tRNA in the A site, and the tRNA previously becomes uncharged. At the same time, the ribosome moves one triplet or codon forward on the mRNA strand. As a result, the now uncharged tRNA is in the E site, and the peptidyl tRNA is in the P site. The A site is now unoccupied and ready to accept a new tRNA. This cycle is repeated for each codon on the mRNA. The last stage of translation in eukaryotic cells is termination. Termination is when the stop codon is reached in the mRNA. There are three stop codons which are UAA, UAG, and UGA. No tRNA can fit in the A site at this point because there is no tRNA that matches the complementary sequence. Instead, they are recognized by proteins called release factors. In eukaryotes, a single release factor, ERIF1, recognizes all three stop codons, and ERF3 is also required for termination. After E, 
RF1 and ERF3 have bound, the bond between the polypeptide and the tRNA is essentially cut. In the final step of translation termination, the chain of amino acids and the tRNA are released, as well as the release factors ERF1 and 3, as well as the mRNA and the disassembly of the ribosomal subunits. Now it is ready for a new round of translation. Bacteria and eukaryotes are quite different when it comes to translation. For instance, when it comes to ribosome composition, the bacteria has 70S ribosomes, 30S subunit, 21 proteins plus 1 rRNA, 50S subunits, 34 proteins plus 2 rRNAs, while eukaryotes have 80S ribosomes, 40S subunits, 33 proteins plus 1 rRNA, 60S subunits, 49 proteins plus 3 rRNAs. The initiator tRNA for bacteria is tRNA FMET. And for the eukaryote, it is tRNA met. Formation of the initiation complex also differs between the two. For bacteria, it requires IF1, IF2, and IF3. For eukaryotes, it requires more initiation factors compared to bacterial initiation. In bacteria, the initial binding of mRNA to the ribosome requires a shine delgarno sequence. However, for the eukaryote, it requires a 7-methylguanosine cap. The selection of a start codon in bacteria is as follows. AUG, GUG, or UUG, located just downstream from the shine delgarno sequence. The start codons for eukaryotes are according to COSAC's rules. The elongation rate for both bacteria and eukaryotes are also different. In bacteria, the rate is typically 15 to 20 amino acids per second, while the eukaryotes is only 2 to 6 amino acids per second. Termination for bacteria requires RF1, RF2, and RF3, while eukaryotes requires ERF1 and ERF3. The location of translation is located in the cytoplasm in bacteria. For eukaryotes, the location is in the cytosol. Bacteria is coupled to transcription. However, eukaryotes are not coupled to transcription. This is just a few of the differences between bacteria and eukaryotes during translation.